and simply return to your breath. Leave all thoughts of the past and future and simply return to your breath, breathing in and out. Feeling more and more relaxed as you enter a place of just simplicity and stillness. Imagine yourself in a beautiful, quiet forest where the peace of the nature around you completely relaxes and soothes the soul. And in your mind, simply invite God or your higher self or divine energy to saturate you in peace or to saturate you in love. You pick the quality. So invite God, the divine, your higher self, whichever you're comfortable with right now, to saturate you in the quality you wish for. And now all you have to do is simply breathe. Notice the air coming in and out as you breathe gently. You don't have to try too hard. You don't have to do anything but just allow this pure divine energy to come into you. So don't worry about trying too hard. Just breathe in and out and allow. Knowing that whatever you long for or request from the divine is yours. Just like a child has the right to anything they wish for that is healthy for them. Know that anything you wish for is yours. And continue to breathe and allow. Good afternoon. Everyone, a very warm welcome to Brahmakumari Silicon Valley. I'm Meghna, the host of this session. And today we are starting a new monthly series on self-development. And the topic is shifting from burdensome to blissful life. I think we could all use a lot of joy, happiness in our life. And the happiness that lasts for a long time and leaves a very deep impression on us. To me, that is what bliss is. Something that is not very transient, something that is very deep experience and that stays with you and influences everyone around you is bliss. And this is not something that can be achieved by doing something or by buying something or by getting something or by saying something. It is actually a natural expression of the soul, which we all don't experience that easily anymore. So the intention of this series is to show you a path, a rather easy path on how to move away from heavy living to light living. As we all are carrying different kinds of burdens. And we will see in this topic what kind of burdens we all are carrying. I'm pretty sure you are all well aware of these burdens. I'm assuming in, since you're part of this series, indeed there are certain burdens that you would also want to let go and lead a more light life. Burdens are always heavy and any heavy thing brings you down. It won't allow you to fly. Leaves are very light. 
and they fly on their own, just little bit of wind push and they're flying everywhere. And it is such a beautiful experience to be light, free, free to move wherever I want to, free to feel whatever I want to. That kind of freedom is what we all want. And so how do we once again rediscover ourselves to be that uh, beautiful, blissful being is what we will go over in the next four classes. The series every week on Sunday from 2 to 3 p.m. will last this entire month. So for four Sundays, we will be getting deeper and deeper into this topic to understand it completely. And uh, the series is completely discussion-based. Um, as we get into the discussion, your thoughts, your questions over the chat are very, very welcome. And in the end, we will reserve five to 10 minutes for questions related to this particular topic. So happy to take them up towards the end. But there are any specific question as we are going over the topic, we can certainly take those as well as they arise. But if you can hold them off, till towards the end, then that is better. Um, so every if you are someone who's joined our previous series, you might know the format of this. We start off with a short guided meditation, taught at Brahma Kumari's called Rajoka meditation. Here we'll be, I will be saying certain thoughts out loud and the request is for you to follow those words, absorb those words in your heart and allow those beautiful feelings to emerge. The intent of these thoughts are to generate very warm feelings that we don't often experience for a long time. We work too hard to experience those feelings. You will see how meditation releases those beautiful emotions without any effort, without doing anything. We can experience our inner warmth, our richness, and meditation is that tool. So without any further ado, let's get started with that guided meditation. Request you to kindly join me. The intention of this meditation is to see the self as forever a warm being full of inner richness. Constant peace constant love, constant bliss is what I am here to experience. I, the imperishable energy, is not satisfied with momentary joy, momentary peace, transient love, conditional love. I need everything to be imperishable. With that intention, move away from everything external. and guide your mind to step inwards and be in your own sweet company.
pan flower always has its face towards the sun it starts blossoming smiling when it sees the sun and when we see the sunflower our face also becomes bright and lit with enthusiasm the physical sun has to move away and then the sunflower withers becomes dull inactive loses its brightness and charm and waits for the sun to come again ask yourself are you also bright and happy sometimes when things are going in a favorable direction or are you always lit with joy bright and blooming all physical things are meant to end there is no permanence in the physical world there is constant movement and perishability no matter how hard i try things are meant to move or change and end so the sun has to keep moving or maybe the sun is there where it is supposed to be but earth has to move move away from the sun but i the spiritual being can always have my face towards the spiritual sun the spiritual sun is always shining is full of rays of peace love and joy there is not a moment when the spiritual sun the supreme is not shining radiating love it is up to me to look up to this spiritual sun absorb his rays his pure rays of love and blossom fully when i get lit with the supreme's love god's love then many souls will automatically get attracted towards this supreme energy or the supreme sun the soul the spiritual sun and there will be many spiritual sunflowers in this world always lit irrespective of day or night that is the biggest difference between a physical and a spiritual experience physical experience changes and comes to an end whereas a spiritual experience is forever stable constant living in this physical world i can still stay connected to the spiritual sun 
draw his vibrations towards me. and nourish myself with the knowledge that allows me to blossom, stay bright and blooming at every moment. The scenes of life will change as we are in the physical world. They will change, they will end. But I continue to draw power from the spiritual sun and keep my face lit that every scene of the life is welcome. Every scene enables me to learn. I refuse to be attached to a particular scene that is not wisdom, that is weakness, that I am comfortable only in few scenes of life. I'm a bold, courageous, mighty full soul that welcomes every scene. When I learn the art of smiling, through every scene of life, I become the spiritual sunflower that never withers, that never becomes dull. Instead, I am forever energetic, bright. And I empower many others to remain lit with happiness. After all, we are here in this world to be happy. Why put conditions to our happiness? At every moment, I choose to remain light. Let life teach me whatever I don't know. I remain patient and calm as life teaches me and I become stronger and stronger. I'm happy learning. Learning is growing. Thank you, dear life, for helping me become a better version of myself. And thank you, Supreme, for sending those powerful vibrations to keep me always lit. A very warm Welcome to everyone once again to Brahma Kumari Silicon Valley. Today we are starting the first class on shifting from burdensome to blissful life. So first class we will focus on what is the root cause of burdensome life. That will be the content today. And as we progress through the series, we will start understanding how do we change all of these burdens and move towards blissful life. So let's get started. So Wanted to just take a pulse check. How is everyone feeling right now? What are you experiencing right now? If you could share it in a word, please share it on the chat. What are you experiencing right now? Calm, lonely content. Very good. In hurry. Peace from meditation. 
Thank you. That's good to know. Peaceful, relaxed. The need to change many things about my life and thinking due to deep grief experience. Okay, yes, we have to go through a lot of challenges. So thank you all for sharing. Just wanted to kind of share this overall high level perspective on burdens, right? There are many countries where porters are used to move luggage from one place to another especially for me growing up in India. And we used, we used to use trains a lot. At that time, planes were quite expensive and not so many options were available. So we would travel mostly by train. And there, there would be porters who would move your luggage from one place to another. And if you look at this, it is such a lot of burden on this one person. There could be loads and loads of baggages on their hands, on their head. And a lot of these people are working eight to 12 hours a day, lifting all kinds of physical burdens. But then there are some of us who have, this is a physical burden, right? These are not physical burdens, but yet they are on us. All the time we are carrying them. And look at this, the burdens of people, the house, the finances, the objects, the to-do list, the regrets, the office work, the car loan maybe, the mobile, what all needs to happen and so on. It's a huge burden that many of us um, is, is basically going on and it is 24 by 7. This at least, even though we, we can't compare, I mean, obviously this is also a big burden, but after some time, this person gets to rest, whereas this person is carrying it 24 by seven. And then there are very few in this world who are doing everything. They are taking care of all of these things. They also have relatives to take care of. They have a job possibly, and they also have a lot of other things loans and other things to take care of, but they are feeling very, very light, not just for one minute or two minutes. 24 by 7, they are very light. And this is what bliss is. It's not about letting go of the responsibilities. It is not about moving away from people or family. It is about being there, doing everything and yet feeling like an angel. An angel always is shown with a wand. An angel is both a man and a woman. This is gender free, although I couldn't find an image that was so gender free, but always has a wand. And with magical wand, it just does, you know, whoosh with that wand and things happen. So it is taking care of everything, but it feels as if it has done nothing. It's almost like a movement of a wand. Did this and it happened. Did that and it happened. So how can we make our life so simple that I'm doing everything, but it feels like I did actually did nothing. That is when bliss comes. Where you're doing everything, but there is no heavy feeling I've done. Oh my gosh, from morning I've been doing. I'm so tired. I've not even had a cup of tea or cup of coffee. That is not called bliss. So how do you go about experiencing that? We have to think about it. Now, how is the feeling? I think we are all aware. We've, we've felt bliss at times, maybe extreme happiness, whatever you want to call it. We've also been here, burdened. So what is the contrast? If you could state maybe a word here and a word there, what is the contrast between these two when you're feeling burdened versus you're feeling bliss? We need to first know how it feels. So the symptoms of being burdened and the symptoms of being blissful. If you could share over the chat, I would appreciate that. Tired, yes, when you are burdened, you are very, very tired. Stress and worries going on, anger, unhappy, happiness and sadness. Okay, that contrast. 
blissful you are happy burdened you are stress very true you are airy and then like a rock yes with blissful you feel very light blissful is light burden is heavy blessed and positive prone to addictive patterns yes so blissful is happy blissful is calm blissful is light blissful is positive and blessed blissful is also contentment very well said in addition to that we can go a bit deeper to understand this because we need to know that whenever we are feeling all of these things it means we are burdened we are feeling quite heavy so when i am constantly saying this is very hard this is so difficult life is very challenging i can't believe life keeps changing on me it is too complex it means i am burdened these words itself when we are using it means i am burdened the one who is blissful you give them the hardest task they will not call it hard they'll say i need to learn i need to improve this is something new wow i want to learn something new but they will not use the word effortful difficult complex that those words itself are so heavy and if we use heavy words our vocabulary is filled with heavy words we will feel burdened because every word i've been taught generates energy and that energy is either heavy positive negative or light positive burdened soul is generally confused about everything should i do this should i do that i don't know what i should do i am so lost can you help me they always feel things are very very unpredictable life is so uncertain people are so unpredictable i'm constantly anxious these are again indications a person who is blissful will never find anything to be unpredictable they will say we know what is going to come whatever is going to come is going to be good whatever i don't know i will learn i will improve what is there to be uncertain about everything is certain everything is good versus a burdened soul will always have lot of self doubt will i be able to handle it i don't know whether i can manage it or not i don't know whether i'll get the support of people or not i am too weak they will constantly find everything to be out of control people just don't listen to me i've been trying so hard my kids don't cooperate my spouse doesn't cooperate my manager is like this i've been trying to please them everything seems impossible the dictionary this word is also very heavy energy impossible life is impossible mother in law is impossible what is impossible i am calling it's a heaviness and constantly feels unaccomplished they do lot of things a person who is burdened doesn't mean they are not doing look at all the things they are trying to move they are constantly trying to do something and after doing so much also they feel unaccomplished they don't feel that joy that they got so many things done and this was the old meghna she did so much she was so busy when when this knowledge came into my life i couldn't even find half an hour for the spiritual practices with lot of you know reducing little bit of my sleep or something i could find that half an hour because my whole day was packed with all the things i had to take care of and in spite of doing so much at work at home and everywhere i felt unaccomplished i always felt there is more to do there is more to do and i was always running 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 and this is what a burdened person feels now blissful person doesn't mean they don't have things to do i in fact now is doing lot more than what i did almost 10 years back i think my work quantity has almost more than doubled i would say easily more than doubled and yet i feel so light i feel so accomplished and i feel full of attainment so blissful is an exact contrast 
you will feel everything is easy you will not even use the word hard man now what happened why did this happen i wish then didn't, didn't this didn't happen what they will have full clarity of what happened in the past they will know what will happen in the future they know what why the present is the way it is they know fully and even if they don't know they are so patient they are like okay life will tell me what it is i don't need to be feeling this is so uncertain this is so unpredictable they are always carefree they feel success is their birthright if they will not be successful who will be successful they feel they have everything in them to learn and improve and they already know a lot and whatever they don't know they will learn they feel at every moment they have everything they need to be successful they are loaded with courage will power they feel they are super blessed very fortunate souls and always they feel they are in charge they are in charge of their mind they they are writing their own destiny they are in full control and they feel instead of things being impossible they feel they have been born to make the impossible possible and this is not just blind faith or anything like that just sitting idle and hoping things will happen they are completely involved they are working on everything but their attitude towards life is so different their attitude towards themselves and people is very different and they constantly feel very accomplished they feel life has given them so many gifts so we have to move away from this burdensome life to blissful life that is this entire journey for the next 4 weeks so um i see here not everything is good sorry disagree it's not very clear what the question might be but uh, let's let's keep going through the content and feel free to pose your question again if it is a question so um where is the seed of burden being sown where does the burden start in the mind there you go yes the burden start in the mind in your thoughts yes going even deeper yes everything is good okay got it you are and you don't agree with that and well for me this is through my own personal experience and based on knowledge i feel everything is good whatever happened there is always a good in it there can't be a thing where there is no good in it we always have this contrast we'll see only the glass is half empty or some other person sees glass is half full that is the way of my looking that there is always everything there is always something good in it so that is what i wanted to say by that so as you all said it we all know as we plant a seed then we take care of it it comes out to be a seedling then becomes a sapling as we keep taking care of it and then becomes an adult tree that gives you fruits so the seed of burden like you all said is being sown in the mind and then causes all the branches of life to also become burdensome so when the seed is that when i sow the seed which is the thought like one of you said that life is hard complex and difficult that is a bitter melon this seed is basically a bitter melon seed or a bitter gourd seed and then automatically what fruit will i get from that tree my relationships will feel difficult my work will feel difficult the finances will be complex and work relationships finances body health everything will seem either hard difficult or complex now these are just the end results and we tend to focus on why did i get bitter guards i shouldn't have gotten bitter guards 
generally at least old megna used to always say why is this relationship like this i wish my relationship was better or why is this work like this or why is the health of the body like this i wish it was better i can't stand this body's health so we are looking at the burden here on the branches of life and pramakumaris we are taken to a very very deep level and we understand what is the seed you had sown and the other one is i could say i can sow the seed of mango this seed is of mango here what what is the seed i am sowing i am saying through my thoughts life is very easy it is effortless simple it is my life is very easy it is effortless it is very simple it is full of joy my life is beautiful i can sow that seed also and automatically if i'm sowing the seed of mango i will get those mangoes in my backyard i if i keep sowing the seed of bitter melon and i want mangoes in my backyard it is not going to happen i can't if i keep calling relationships are difficult this person is difficult or this boss is like this or this finances or the financial market is like that if i keep calling everything difficult then the end result is difficult life but if i inside of me has this strong belief that everything is easy everything is an opportunity to learn grow and improve nothing is hard i am here to accomplish i have it in me if that is my seed that i am sowing then i will have an easy life this i am writing my own destiny difficult life or easy life burdened life or blissful life i am writing the destiny through my own thoughts so very important as we are going through this entire series highly recommend you all to keep a journal every day in the end of your day check what kind of thoughts you created and maybe you don't remember but then at least recollect did you find anything to be very heavy very burdensome tiring we talked about all the symptoms very confusing impossible did you find anything in the day to be like that then go a little bit deeper and check what kind of thoughts you were creating and see if you can change the th- the seed the thought and experience something different so storms of no and, and the storms of life are meant to come you know these there is no escaping from it they are meant to come like you know we will find certain people to be difficult or certain people to be contrasting personality maybe job becoming way too much uh, busy or finances going up and down or body health going up and down these storms will continue to come there is nobody who can escape this there's not a single person we always find grass is greener on the other side we feel when we look at someone's smiling face we feel man their life is so good everything is so good on their side and for me this has been the biggest shock few people that i thought had a great life when they started sharing with me i was shocked they had so many problems people put all kinds of acts on their faces to show that they have a great life and we assume man it's only my life is terrible life everybody has their own set of challenges there is nobody in this world who doesn't have but when those challenges come what am i creating at the root level so we always this is a very uh, very powerful analogy that is used in brahma kumaris a lot and i really love it um and i find it very very easy to understand using this analogy and i'm pretty sure if you've been coming to this sessions we've used it a lot so what kind of thoughts am i creating am i creating a lot of negative thoughts in reaction to the storms of life oh i'm stressed i'm mad i am have i am feeling very very worried or fearful or and and when you feel those negative thoughts automatically there is a weakness in the soul 
every negative thoughts takes away the soul power because what does it tell the soul when we create anger we are blaming it on others we are saying because of them my life is miserable i'm so mad at them so here i've given the power to this person saying you have the power to disturb my life or when i create fear i'm doubting myself saying i don't have the capacity to take care of this storm of life this is too big for me so i am doubting myself or i am giving away my power to someone else so any negative thought is a clear cut indication that the soul is becoming weak and when the soul becomes weak everything they need to take care of becomes a big burden because this storms will continue to come more responsibilities will come that is we already have quite a few branches to manage in addition more sub branches get added then and the roots are weak then the roots will feel lot of heaviness because they are weak they can't take more burdens and more responsibilities more changes more perishability keeps coming and the soul feels more and more tired on the other hand we have a way this is the art of living where we can educate ourselves to think positively and this entire series we will talk about how to do that on various different burdens the moment you create positive thoughts that this person is different for me they are trying to create challenges for me their problem i am not going to let them disturb me i'm going to remain peaceful i'm going to show them what it means to be loving and peaceful i could create a different set of thoughts the moment the soul creates positive thoughts they feel powerful and that powerful soul can lift any kind of burdens in fact a burdensome soul might actually have respons less responsibilities but if because of their negative thoughts even small branches feel very heavy whereas this person who is blissful they might have lot more responsibilities but because they know how to remain light they are so happy so it is not about how many branches you have how many problems you have how many challenges you have it is about the way you respond it is about how much power have you developed within you how much care have you taken care of yourself most of the times we don't take care of ourselves at all and then we start blaming this is changing that is changing this is not right that is not right that is again a feeling of victimhood and a victim always find themselves to be very heavy so i'm seeing two comments here no one sows a burden seed on purpose if things from positive go to negative on falling down it doesn't mean i sow a seed burden seed so at every moment i am choosing to sow either a a burdensome seed or a blissful seed at every moment i am choosing yes due to ignorance i might be continuing to sow burdensome seed but i have a choice we can't say that oh problems came so i sow the bitter melon oh everything was good so i i was sowing you know mango seed that is again i'm choosing right but life is about ups and downs and if i want always mangoes then i should sow mangoes or otherwise i can say mango is seasonal i can only be blissful when everything is right which is very rare then we become a victim we are completely dependent on how things will be how many storms will come or not come very true so many we need to be grateful for whatever we have as you said it so rightly that so many are struggling through war loss of family no food absolutely basic needs are not being met for so many people so the burdens how they get amplified it is very important that once we get heavy in our thoughts and emotions how they get start trickling down our voice becomes heavy 
when these thoughts become heavy we don't even realize the way we are talking is almost like shouting very forceful very impatient and many family members might point why are you yelling and we get even more mad at them what do you mean yelling you've been just sitting idle from morning up and doing so much work instead of helping you're telling me i'm yelling so the voice also becomes heavy look at the amplification of and even when such a person is walking it looks like something will fall something will break there is so much noise when such a person who's thinking heavily their steps will be full of sound versus a person who's happy it's a half is uh, you won't even know that they are walking i've seen so many people who are like that they walk so lightly when they are talking it's as if some music is you know it's like some music is running that much is the contrast between what your thoughts and emotion can do even to your voice and your way of talking and walking your actions become very heavy the way you are driving or the way you are cooking you know you'll be literally hitting the utensils as if you are at a war with the car with the utensils with the laundry or even on the keyboard little bit the internet is slow they will start hitting the keyboard this mind is heavy the blame is on the internet is so slow or this traffic is so you know unmanageable or these dishes they never get done actions become burdensome relationships we can't stand even a little bit of disturbance in the relationship we want everyone to follow whatever we have said little bit they don't follow we get very very upset man these people i've told them so many times they still don't understand i don't know what i need to do so that they can understand me so this heaviness is inside but instead of looking there i'm finding everything to be heavy and i put the blame on them this person i told them they didn't listen this traffic i i wanted to avoid it is still there this person till i don't yell they won't listen i am the one who's doing everything yet that answer is being looked for elsewhere work becomes burdensome office work everything seems too much then you know some mistakes you might have made or you continue to make they will also feel too much when you are very happy and you make a mistake you were like okay i need to learn indeed i don't need to repeat it but you don't feel that heaviness you're not so repent you know full of that repentance but when the mind is heavy everything becomes an added burden the net result is the entire body the soul everything is tired and the life seems burdensome so how this burden gets trickled down it keeps amplifying till the entire life itself feels very heavy and some powerful quotes from ramakumari is that there is nothing really a problem as such in life it is my thoughts it is the way i am thinking about it that is causing those burdens and for me this last decade with brahma kumaris i've been working with brahma kumaris on changing my thoughts and obviously i still have a very long way to go but whatever work so far done there is so much lightness so much lightness that the voice has changed the face expressions have changed the way i work at home has changed my relationships the way i look at it everything for me has changed because of working at the thought level we all need to not overburden ourselves by looking at life and coming to quick, quick conclusions it quite it's quite possible everything seems broken apart everything seems like a big mystery but the one who says all right no day is the same every day is different no day is the same today is like this i'll see how tomorrow will be and then i'll see how tomorrow again will be the one who creates that positivity inside of them they automatically attract positivity 
slowly life and universe supreme start sending those positivity to them when we maintain that trust all right today is like this i'll see how tomorrow will be even simple thought like that can change remove these burdens to a big extent this is the most beautiful quote art of living which we will try throughout this series and i'm hoping you all will contribute a lot towards learning this living style it is an art of living where i manage to keep myself in pleasure in emotional stability at every scene of the drama let whatever come how do i remain in peace in stability in pleasure let's we will talk about uh, it is hard to take care of everything we'll continue to talk about everything as we in more detail so hopefully these things will get clear as we ex- go through the content now what is the root cause of so many burdens in our mind why is the mind creating so many heavy thoughts what is the reason for it would love to hear your responses on the chat is there anybody in the audience who doesn't understand english and they only know hindi if so please let me know on the chat and then i will try to do a little bit of hindi in between expectation life experiences okay lack of knowledge well said something going wrong then expected yes overthinking why do we overthink why do we have expectations why do we why do we yeah it's a lot of it is expectations hardships of life well hardships of life then why do i create that burden hardships are there for everyone right having preconceived notions of what has to do what has to happen if that doesn't happen that causes burdens in the mind so it comes down to expectations we always want things to be our way uncertainty why does uncertainty cause burdens ask yourself this uncertainty is there in this world but some people remain light with that uncertainty doesn't mean they are careless but they have learned the art of remaining light afraid of losing our own sanskaras always looking for more anger waste thoughts hey good thank you all for sharing um and like we said we go very very deep because still we don't go deep and clear that remove those weeds from the roots they will keep growing right otherwise if we just chop off the head from the top and we leave the roots those weeds will come back again those burdens will come back again unless we eradicate them from the roots and so if we go deeper the main big reason is the body consciousness or the limited awareness of who i am in the mind we have lot of these masks we are wearing the egoistic identities of who i am and what is mine so typically each one of us has many many identities or many masks we are all wearing some of the popular ones are i am gender i am nationality i am this relationship i am this profession i am this education i am this talent i am this quality i am this skill and then anything that you call i there is automatically lot of a sense of ownership that i am this that automatically wants us for whatever i am to be the best so whatever belongs to me has to be the best so if i think of myself as a wife i will automatically think my husband 
my husband is the richest or my husband is the kindest or my husband is like this or i am a very very good wife i deserve to be loved lot of the thoughts change and lot of expectations start the moment you think of these kind of identities and we will see how in the upcoming slides and typically each one of us these highlighted in yellow dots i i is basically i am like the small i is indicating all of these ego egoistic identities and some of them we are very attached to for example you could be very attached to i am very very kind i i everybody praises that megna you are so kind so every time i will anybody new i see i want that compliment from them i want them to tell megna you are very kind because that's my identity i'm very attached to it i feel good i feel respect for myself when someone says i am kind so i'll start doing lot of things for them so that they can appreciate and say megna you are kind so it's not really so much of a natural way of being kind but it is more of trying to prove it to everyone so that people can declare megna is kind so every identity here that i am thinking is pretty much a limited identity and why it is limited why this causes burdens let's try to go a bit deeper to understand so we all know that body score needs we all know about it very well what are the needs of the body no need to say right these are the core needs of the body and and when what are the soul score need i think this also you all will be able to answer so i'm not going to ask in the interest of time automatically we want self respect we want peace we want happiness that is the need of the soul now when the soul score need become dependent right on all of these things because i'm calling myself all of this i am male i am female i am hindu i am christian then automatically i don't want my religion to have any kind of bad reputation i don't want my gender any i don't want anybody to be talking poorly about women i don't want my nationality say i am american i don't want anybody to be calling america to be bad if i am attached to that identity it's possible i am not so attached to nationality then if somebody calls my nation nation to be bad it might not bother me so much but when i think of myself as i am that nationality i automatically want my country is the best my country is better than xyz country i am kind i am and i don't like it if somebody else is called kinder i am the kindest so when we carry the burden of who i am on our shoulders and on my own i am not able to prove the worthiness of this identity see this is our core need to feel respect to feel love to feel peace but if i am carrying the burden of this identity on me i am belonging only to the bodily being then this causes lot of fear insecurity helplessness burdensomeness why because on my own i am not able to honor the respect of all of these titles now i might say that you know i am the best mother or i am a very good mother let's forget about best suppose i say i am a very good mother now a teacher comes and gives me feedback that your child is being very naughty doesn't cooperate i might get very defended i might get i might become very defensive about it and say what do you mean my child is not like that i've seen many parents who are very defensive about their child or i might get very upset at my child saying i you're spoiling my reputation is this what i have taught you so my respect of being a mother is dependent on the child is dependent on the teacher the society whether they will recognize me as good mother or a bad mother it's not that as a mother i'm not doing a good job i am doing my best yet in spite of doing my best 
my kids might turn out good or they might not turn out good but when do i as a mother feel good automatically when when the kids are doing well when they respect me when they recognize me when the society recognizes that man your kids are the best so if my identity if my core need of feeling respect for myself is dependent and and okay all right i'm dependent that's fine but can i control that can i control my child to always behave can i control my child to hey never ever stop being a good child the child will continue to evolve maybe today they are very naughty tomorrow they might grow up to be a very very good citizen or they might not i can only as a parent try but can i control no every title that we own here in this physical world that egoistic identities they are all constantly changing for example i claim to be very kind and i'm constantly trying to prove how kind i am now one person comes in front of me and they're constantly trying to put me down and i'm not able to be kind with them so then again i'm not able to uphold the honor of my title i am a kind being megna is very kind she is not able to be kind with this person that means i am not respectful so when we are not able to meet our own needs we feel lot of heaviness the soul then starts feeling very dependent on the external world like if for example you were not able to get all of this on your own if you had to rely on someone you would feel very insecure i don't know tomorrow i'll get water or not i don't know whether tomorrow i'll get enough air to breathe or not how insecure is that living where for my core needs i have to rely on someone so every time we think of ourselves as a bodily being with all of these egoistic identities we are automatically looking externally to support ourselves i am not able to support myself i am not able to meet my own core needs on my own i have to look outside we are all out of time we couldn't uh, complete everything today but we will start next week um, and see how much we can complete um, i would uh, want to give some time if there are any additional questions feel free to ask if you have any questions related to this topic feel free to ask very true that there are corruptions in our system but we are all part of this system so we should take you know responsibility as an entire team or a big group of people and see what we can do the best right instead of harping on one negative side then when we go down and we bring many people down talking about problems 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 that there are indeed problems indeed we can't be happy then there is nothing you can do if one problem is going to bring you down then there are going to be lot more problems so our idea is to focus on things that i can do my best survive my best keep myself as happy as i can that is when i can contribute more but if i get burdened by some problem that is happening which i can't fully control then i am in no position to even solve issues that are actually in my control so i highly recommend thinking about things that are more in my control and do the best i can right versus thinking about this is wrong that is wrong somebody needs to fix it or somebody needs to do it so yes body consciousness does cause lot of problems and we'll continue to see more things as we go through it and we will see how we go about changing lot of these things 
when things are not in control how do i explain it to the mind at that time ask your mind what is in your control what can you do right now maybe i can just wait maybe i will have to wait for a long time maybe i can just be okay with whatever it is tomorrow i will think if there is some other solution but i can't change anything outside it's like in brahma kumaris it said a lot if there is a problem you can either keep hitting your head on the if there is a big mountain in front of you you can keep your head hitting your head or take a hammer and start breaking it change 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 when will you go i'm wanting to control you move away move away or you say okay you are not going to move away fine i'll find a different way to keep myself happy peaceful that is what you have to tell your mind i do a lot for my family but still feel not doing enough what i should do yes i think we all feel in that i at least i was in a very similar situation where i did a lot and i still felt unaccomplished so this is not something that changes overnight but i do recommend if you can get up early in the morning very early in the morning preferably before 5 if possible if not at least as early as 5 or 6 am and sit with the pen and paper and note down all the things you have done so far note down the tiniest things and then also note down the things you have not done and say recognize which were important you will see most of the important th- things you've already done it for your family and if there is some list which of important things that you have not done create a plan this this one week at least one thing i want to see and get it done it is as simple as that instead of constantly feeling it let's note it down let's take action losing patience easily yeah so patience comes when the soul becomes nourished and the soul becomes nourished through meditation by taking care and raj yoga meditation is very powerful to connect to the supreme and fill ourselves with that happiness where there is inside contentment and happiness patience is automatic but when the soul inside is constantly disturbed it can't wait it wants to control immediately or am is little hard so get up maybe 5 or 6 but uh, i was also someone who would say getting up early was impossible but after having kids i started getting up a bit earlier and then now with this spiritual practice i get up very very early and it is so easy for me in fact any day if i get up at if i get up later than 4 for me it is like afternoon I'm man I got up at 4 o'clock it's noon time I enjoy my morning time so much it is so quiet you can get so much done highly recommend it great you're able to get up at 4:30 hopefully you can get up at 4 earlier and do it better and joan yes I, i i know you have some questions and some things which i absolutely agree cannot be um it's hard to have conversation over chat and understand each other but maybe next time if we have more time you can unmute and speak up so um, the reason i don't feel sleepy is i uh, first of all once you start meditating actively we don't need more than 6 hours of sleep you can even do with 4 to 5 hours sometimes and so i do sleep very early for sure <laughs> i don't sleep late i sleep quite early and my key is i eat very light dinner very light dinner and very early because they always say eat breakfast like a king then like a maybe a reasonably rich man lunch and then dinner should be like a poor person very little and that's what i do and and then morning is very fresh and when when you take so much energy early in the morning through meditation when you take care of yourself entire day you feel energetic so yes in the beginning when i started i did feel a little bit sleepy and tired and i used to take afternoon nap for few minutes or sometimes half an hour 
maybe even an hour sometimes weekend i would take an hour nap but now i don't need that nap either it's because i've been doing it for so long and and the soul feels very nourished wonderful all great questions thank you all for joining us while well, i wouldn't want to share what time i get up and what time i sleep because it it will give you a big shock so just assume i sleep quite early and i get up within 6 hours i'll get up right so you can guess what time that would be um because a lot of people find it very shocking when i tell my sleeping patterns and i would rather you build on your own time but if you can get up at 4 that is great Om Shanti, everyone. Yes, thank you all for those comments and lot of engagement in this um, webinar. Really appreciate it. We'll see you all next week. Hope you have a blissful week. Leave all those burdens, and let's smile. Smile making, smiling makes everything very easy. Yes, that is how we spell my name, Meghna. That was right. Yeah. Thank you everyone.